Hey, how's it going, guys? Carson back here with another gigantic haul. This time we've purchased over 200 comics off of eBay. Why? That's that's how I do my comic purchasing, I guess. More or less, uh, these books cost about a dollar plus tax a piece. That includes shipping. Um, and then there were some, it's kind of like one of those ones where the images look, you know, there's just books everywhere and you're kind of like looking for clues on the, which ones are really nice and, you know, all that stuff. So I think there's at least like three pretty good keys in this lot somewhere. So it's basically like someone's collection, I think. Um, so I have an unboxed this. I just opened it up enough to peek inside to grab the box. So you guys wouldn't have to see me dealing with whatever packing or lack thereof. So. Uh, but first, I did want to show you guys this as well. Uh, I got finally part two of the NECA TMNT loot crates. Um, so if you guys have been keeping track of these NECA TMNT figure loot crates at all, you know they have taken an eternity to come out. Uh, the like There were four exclusive figures of these loot crates. The first one was uh, Danny from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 1 movie. Um, and then this one, I'll just go ahead and pop it up. But I already opened this thing. I couldn't wait <laughs> a couple days ago. So I just wanted to show you guys what was in it in case you were wondering or wanted it spoiled or wanted to know what you were messing out on. So the big figure that came with uh, this claw shredder from the Mirage Run, really cool Eastman artwork on the sides. Um, but yeah, this is the main exclusive figure that you can only get through this box, basically. Um, so this is why most people pre-ordered. But I actually really enjoy the extra stuff that came with it this time i probably i don't collect the pewter pins but they're always neat uh but there's that uh really nice t-shirt actually um with one of the first splash panels from the teenage mutant ninja turtles comic so i really like that so this whole box really represents the mirage run stuff and then the last one i was really excited about the all tom fanny pack or you know most people are just going to call it the Krang Fanny Pack, let's be honest, but still really like that. I may have to maybe wear this in public. <laughs> so a lot of fun, really cool loot box. Um, would have been nice if, you know, the timing on it would have been better. Uh, but honestly, I wasn't disappointed in the items. I really like each and every item that was thrown in there. So really enjoyed that. All right, we got the loot crate out of the way. Now let's dig in to over 200 plus comics because we're, we're going to, we're going to have to blow through these pretty quick, but uh, basically it's one giant box, and then they gave me four boxes like this, so yeah, there you go, comics, now we know. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we're just going to dive right in here, probably just unbox as we go and then put them back in the box to keep everything kind of organized here, and I could just tell, by the way, they had the listing sort in the picture, there's, there's going to be no organization whatsoever to this, and you're going to see how random some of the stuff is. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this has to be somebody's collection. Uh, there's going to be a lot of these like cartoon Whitmans and gold keys and stuff. Um, don't really mean too much to me. They're kind of neat, uh, but I don't collect them. So I'll probably be uh, getting these out of the collection as soon as possible. But we got some Daffy Duck comics. Um, I saw a lot of Spider-Man in there. So that's kind of what enticed me to begin with to go ahead and get this lot. So here it looks like. Amazing Spider-Man 226, and a lot of these are probably like mid to low grade, so nothing too crazy, I'm sure. We'll see. Web we'll Spider-Man 37, you can't go wrong with Spidey. Uh, we've got Amazing Spider-Man 290, which is cool because I think I needed that for run filler. More Daffy Duck. Pink Panther, really cool, but whew, that's ticked off for being in a bag and board. <laughs> I've seen these, but I've never actually owned any of them. We got the plop comics from 70s dc uh here's another one issue number 24 it's like we've got tip top comics i've definitely never heard of tip top but there we go cool looking issue of iron man 144 someone got a little bit too excited with their marker it looks like we got strange tales 182 um always like the strange tales looks like we got some religious comics here. Uh, Rob Zombie Spook Show is <laughs> super random, but there it is. Uh, DC Comics Inferior Five. These are always fun, or like parody of the Fantastic Four, what have you. Um, looks like a random issue of the. Actually, I think 
yeah, this was like a Walmart exclusive when Spider-Man 1 came out. So these are always cool to have. Now, here's one of the books I was excited uh, to see that was in there. And I'm really hoping for the entire run and looks to be in pretty fair condition so far. Amazing Spider-Man 293, Craven's Last Hunt, number two. So I saw a lot of what looked to be the Craven's Last Hunt stuff. You know, just basically I could see the border down. So I just recognized like Black Suit Spidey up there and then the top of the book where it said continue a six-part saga. So I didn't actually see the condition or anything on this book. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for the whole set. We'll, we'll see how we do here. Uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man 127. So I can't go wrong with Spidey. Uh, looks like we got another, I think this was a freebie somewhere. Spider-Man Storm and Power Man. Don't know if this was an action figure variant or some handout somewhere. Got some 90s Spider-Man 397, and it, it is a flip book based on your fun 90s gimmicks. Spider-Man 262, pretty sure I already got a copy of that hanging around somewhere. Uh, we got the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 18. Now, here's the next one I was... Very excited to maybe think about this being in, and it's it's lower grade, it looks like, but for a buck, I'll, I'll take it. 252, Amazing Spider-Man. It is a, a presser experiment for sure. Um, yeah, you could definitely, oof. Got some work to do on that spine there, but nonetheless, new stand as well. Got some battle damage up there. Um, but yeah, this is one of the bigger books I was hoping for, and it was in there, so... We'll see what I do with that because I don't think that's... I was kind of hoping maybe for an upgrade copy, but I don't think so there. I just got to see what I can do with the press and move on. Uh, Web of Spider-Man number 10. Uh, looks like we got the Amazing Spider-Man 394. Is this poly bag, really? Oh, no, it was just... And it's someone put it in just a plastic bag. So once again, fun 90s foil flip gimmicks. Has all the nines in there. Uh, Marvel Tales 38, Amazing Spider-Man 150, and actually that is not the worst condition in the world. I think I have this, but it's in a much worse condition. Well, it looks like we got a little bag of stuff here. I always like a good old bag of gimmicks. So we've got the Amazing Spider-Man versus Powered Toast Man. So if I remember right, I could be wrong. Let me see if we've got any credits here. I kind of feel like this is some early, uh, yeah. So the story on this one's by Dan Slott, who, you know, was on Spider-Man for like a decade. So this is one of the very early uh, Dan Slott written Spider-Man books out there. So didn't know that was in there for sure. So that's cool. Avengers Strike File. Looks like we got some 90s goodness there. We've got Avengers Log. And I need to stop and acknowledge the chat. Because I just realized I didn't have the chat on this thing, and I see those numbers going up. We got Metarog in the chat. What's going on, man? I feel like a lot of these books are from your time and era, so I think you're going to see a lot of great stuff that you're going to enjoy. I guess uh, we'll, we'll leave it up to you guys if you want to call it a stealth fire. And I'm going to call it, for now, a solid deal, but I got a lot of books. We got Jambo Comics. What's going on, Jambo? Thanks for joining the stream today. Stop smoking giveaway. Uh, <laughs> we got Phil Ailing. What is going on, Phil? So thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. I actually wasn't expecting anyone at all. So what a, what a great surprise. People to talk to while I do this. Uh, we got Marvel Team Up 13. I got some Kirby goodness on there. So really like that. Uh, Spider-Man 214. And once I rebag and board these, then I'll check on the inside of all of them. <laughs> Sometimes I like to see if there's any fun surprises on the inside. Uh, we got a whole bunch more Marvel Tales. Oof. This one is a reader copy for sure. Marvel Tales 33. More Spider-Man 253 right there. It'll be half the fun just rebagging and organizing all these. So issue 130 of Peter Parker Spectacular. Issue 272. We got some. I think that's just a fold over. Eh, maybe I can. Throw in the press real quick and make it a little better. Spectacular 113. I think I already have this one too, but it's I always like this cover. We got the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 20 with Iron Man 2020, who got his own book in 2020 for reasons, obviously. <laughs> More Marvel Tales issue 39. Oh, that 
that's cool. This one actually, they kept their uh, original subscriber board. So that's kind of cool. I, I like seeing weird oddities like that. I didn't subscribe to a lot of the Marvel stuff. Um, I had the DC subscriptions, obviously, but it's cool having that. I'm probably got to keep that with this book. We got Amazing 392. Oh, Matarog, yeah, he says the annual was the first Iron Man 2020. So that's pretty cool. There you go. Very good. We got more amazing. We got 395. I guess this one was kind of hot for a while. Then the storylines kind of sucked in the current comics. Um, 263, first appearance, well, like Herbie Hancock or whatever. <laughs> uh, we got Amazing Spider-Man 261. I think I actually need that for the collection. Really cool Hobgoblin cover. And here we go. It's hoping for more of this story. Because like, one of my all-time favorite Marvel reads, and I don't have all six issues. So I'm really hoping to complete these. Uh, there's part three of Craven's Last Hunt. So very good there. And then here's part one um web 31 which i think i already have this one um i'm trying to think of the ones i'm missing i know i don't have all six but i got at least one through three so far um so we're hoping for four through six i believe amazing 213 we got some more peter parker spider-man this is let's have some battle damage on it there you go uh we've got amazing 259 and then Web of Spider-Man number 70 and another cool-looking uh, subscriber bag there. And then let me go to pile number two of box number one. A lot more of the cartoon gold keys. We got Wacky Adventures of Cracky, uh, some Casper the Friendly Ghost, uh, Walt Disney's Comic and Stories. Oh, look at this. I don't even think I knew this was in there. We got a 12-cent Metal Men, uh, issue number 38. So always like the 12 cent DC stuff. That's some of my all-time favorite stuff to collect right there. So that'll probably be staying in the collection for sure. We got Inferior 5, number 12. And here's something I know I don't really collect at all, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. The Archie and Jughead stuff, Jughead 220. Uh, looks like we got Little Audrey. <laughs> don't know anything about him. <laughs> Uh, we got some incredible Hulk goodness here. We got 163. I think I did my homework on these Hulks. I don't think there's any like big time uh, Wolverine appearances, but this one did get my hopes up really close. 179. So when I saw this, like I started like zooming in on all the pictures and everything. Like, all right, at least give me the 180 or 181. But hey, 179. That's pretty cool too, right? And then we got issue 170, which has a lot of damage on it. Then we jump all the way up to 392. Actually, I don't know if I have a 392. I feel like I got that other like worn pieces cover in the collection, but I don't know if I have that one or not. Then we got some Marvel Super Heroes 45. And more cartoon books. Daisy and Donald. Smokey Bear. And we got Baby Shoots. Don't know anything about Baby Shoots. <laughs> Some sort of, uh, looks like Kellogg, Sports Illustrated, uh, Nolan Ryan freebie. So, cool random point in history. Oh, this is neat. I didn't realize I was getting any Twilight Zone comics from the Gold Key stuff. So, sometimes I like these, like, painted Gold Key covers, especially on the sci-fi stuff. So, really cool there. like the Twilight Zone. We got Boris Karloff's Tales of Mystery. Shout out to my friend, The Great Legend Show. I know he likes them. Some Uncanny Karlov. We got some more here as well. I could probably have to hang on to these like horror themed gold keys at least. These are a lot of fun. So there's another issue. And then UFO Flying Saucers. Another really cool cover there. I said, I think I'm going to hold on to those gold keys. <laughs> Jambo says, well, you got a variety of everything. And a Metarog says, great variety across many publishers. Yeah, but this is, we got a lot to go. <laughs> I think it's mostly like what you're seeing now. A lot of Spider-Man, Marvel, uh, and then cartoon books. Like this person definitely, you could tell, had a, a type of stuff they liked. Um, but yeah, little monsters. Lots and lots of little monsters. <laughs> and I was collecting these for like a second, but I just never found them. So I kind of stopped the uh, Space Family Robinson, Lost in Space. I watched the show as a kid. I really like it. So occasionally if I 
roll across a cheap copy of a gold key lost in space, I'll pick it up. Mickey Mouse, Flintstones, Porky Pig, Woody Woodpecker. I do like some Woody Woodpecker. I may have to hang on to one or two of these. And then O'Malley and the Alley Cat. So that wraps up box number one. <laughs> so Metarog is, is kind of putting me in the, the direction here. I'm keeping an eye on the giveaways. <laughs> you might be on to something there, man. Well, I'll have to get stuff organized at some point for sure now because I certainly got the content to give stuff away. So I might have to do something just to get back in the thick of things, especially like on stuff that I don't necessarily collect, like Bugs Bunny number one. This is actually a really cool Bugs Bunny, but maybe I'll give it away. We'll, we'll see. I'll let you know, Metarog, but you'll be the first to know for sure. So let me unbox this so I can fill this box back up. So, oh, I saw something nice. That's going to be some fun when we get to it. Actually, I might just make that the top of the stack so we can start right there. Whew. Oh, no, that back cover's almost gone. <laughs> All right, we're going to the DC side of things. So we got some giant sizes here. So Detective Comics issue number 439. This was not too bad a condition. Uh, for these, Usually these giants are just pretty wrecked every time I see them. So the fact that I have a giant size where it's not completely split down the middle take that all day for a buck a pop uh we got detect the 438 another good looking giant size we got justice league hopefully i don't destroy it picking it up we got issue 110 slowly putting together some justice leagues to get that collection going uh world's finest number 229 Action Comics 447, a beat-up copy of World's Finest 210. Uh, Superman has no face, apparently, and this book apparently has a spine. <laughs> uh, we got some more World's Finest, Late Run 309, Superman 267. It's a falling apart. <laughs> We got World's Finest number 289. Gil Kane cover, it looks like, on there. And then Superboy 188. Let's see what else we got here. We got some Captain America coming up, but it looks 90s. <laughs> Alone against the all new Jack Lantern issue 396. Giant size Tarzans. Never really collected Tarzan too much either. Oh, I actually bagged and boarded that one. Nice. All right. So here is reason number, I guess, Craven's last thought was reason number one. Black Suit Spidey was reason number two. And reason number three, which looks like I can be officially excited about, is King Size Avengers number 10, the first appearance of Rogue, which they had in a bag and board. So thank goodness. That makes me very happy. So. Um, we'll, we'll be upgrading the, the bag on this for sure. But yeah, this is this looks to be an upgrade finally for me on my first appearance. Rogue already had a copy in the collection, but it was like a $5 beat up, just half destroyed copy. But now I can at least have a find the very fine it looks like. So I think this was actually the very first comic I noticed. Like, you know, you just had that in the picture when they were stacked on top of each other. So I'm like, oh yeah, King Size Avengers free bike. That's probably the one everyone looks for, including myself. So happy with that one for sure. And we also got the ninth King Size Annual Avengers. So always good to have those not destroyed. Never mind, this one's kind of destroyed. <laughs> the bag and board didn't hold up, neither did the back cover. Uh, put that in there. Really cool looking Justice League uh, issue number 48. I'd say for the age, that's pretty good condition, in my opinion. I'm, I'm hanging on to that one for sure. Brave and the Bold, 112, another giant size. Super Team Family, first issue right there. We got some Superboy. Looks like DC Spectacular, number 21. Brave and the Bold, 115. Oof, this one is... Oh, yeah, the back cover is just gone. <laughs> I was like, oh, that back cover is rough. Oh, wait, it's not even there. Oh, wait, the half the front cover is not even there either. So we got a reader. <laughs> Detective Comics 443. 
We got Batman number 254. And that back cover is not the greatest, but hey, cool book nonetheless. Got some Tom and Jerry, some Bugs Bunny. It's a good issue of Bugs Bunny. I might hang on to that one. The colors pop real nice on that. And then what, what do you have after that? After Batman and first row, we get Lassie. But luckily, I think the sticker is on the, the bag. So there's some Lassie 12 cent gold key goodness. Uh, Andy Panda. And then a good run of stuff that gets people into, you know, that Silver Age style collecting, the Classics Illustrated. David Copperfield, Classics Illustrated. Got some Seawolf. And we're going back to DC with it looks like Detective Comics 380. A little bit of battle damage on the side there. And then we're going all over the place with some 80s Superman 404. Action Comics. I think I have this one, luckily. But it's uh, 431. Actually, I had to look on the inside since there's a chunk missing. Um, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes 201. We got some DC Comics Presents number 38. I did try to do a little bit of homework on the DC Comics Presents stuff to see if there was any crazy stuff. And once again, I think it's just some some cool, you know, reader copies of DC Comics Presents. Uh, Secret Origins number six. And we got... Some Batman 353. And then now here is reason number four I bought this lot. And this is the final, besides maybe three more Cravens in there, uh, this is the final reason I bought this lot because this book is always really nice. I think my current one is out on uh, with uh, grading service now, but a decent copy of Batman 357 there. First Killer Croc, first Jason Todd, I believe. Um, so very happy with that. <laughs> it does not look that bad at all, considering it has no bag and board. Obviously, it's got some spine tick action there, but that's all things considered, that is not bad at all. So happy with that one for sure. We'll just go ahead and put that up there for put in a real nice bag and board when we're done here. We got a reader, Brave and the Bold 111. Just cool Joker Batman cover from that era, though. We've got Haunted Library, some Charlton comics. Now we're going into some Charlton stuff there. Uh, some Beetle Bailey. Yeah, more Superman. I'm going to start I think about ready just to start completely run filling the uh, Bronze Age of Superman. I seem to be accumulating a lot of Bronze Superman lately, which isn't a bad thing. I like me some Bronze Supes. Um, here is Superman 45. Really cool Jerry Ordway art on that one. And then Superman or Superboy 204. And actually, I forgot I did. I, I really wanted this next book as well. Um, I know maybe someone like a Metarog can, can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But we got the Adventures Superman Annual number one, which I believe is the first time we had Dan Jurgens on a Superman title of any sort. Um, so I feel like being the Dan Jurgen Superman fan I am, I, I needed this book in the collection. So definitely hanging on to that one for sure. And we got some cool copper soups, 429. We've got 591, 288, lots of Superman. Always kind of like this cover between the uh, kind of almost the team up of Superman saving Batgirl there. We got Superman 260, which is, I don't know what this is. <laughs> this is a random something there. But yeah, we got an issue of Superman there. World's Finest 231, I think it's going to fall apart. <laughs> and we got another World's Finest 284. Action Comics 453. 449, if I could get a grip on it. <laughs> We got some Superboy 192, more action, 563. He doesn't love some ambush bug, <laughs> some Mitz Pitalik, or however you want to feel like pronouncing that. <laughs> uh, Giant Size Justice League 112, World's Finest 224, 
in a giant size Superboy 202. So we're, I think we're about halfway, <laughs> halfway through the hall so far. So there's two boxes down. We got two to go. Nice. Uh, it's kind of getting to the point where my, my homework books have already mostly been shown. So I don't really know what to expect at this point. I'm, I'm really open for some more Spider-Man stuff. But that may have been all that one box. Um, oh, yeah, this, these were in there, too. I mean, I kind of forgot what was interesting. I forgot there were a few things in here. Nothing super crazy key, but just some fun books coming up here. Uh, we'll start with some Conan, the Barbarian, Giant, our King Size Annual number two, uh, the awesome Slapstick number one. Oh, I knew Matterog would like that Legion stuff. <laughs> he says, nice Legion stuff, and he likes the, uh, the Killer Croc first appearance. Got Amazing Spider-Man 393. Around the point I started collecting, I remember these, uh, they did a lot of the Clone Saga stuff, a lot of the flip books. So I'm always like getting those when I can. Uh, Marvel 2-on-1, number two, Thing and Submariner team up. Fantastic Four. We got some Fantastic Four in the stack officially. Issue 148. We got 2-on-1, number three, Thing and Daredevil. FF 158. And just like the last random haul I had like this, we got the thing popping in there, which I probably got the same issue in my last like randomized big eBay haul. We've got uh, Marvel's Greatest Comics 53. Another two in one issue 50 where the thing fights the thing. Here's a cool looking one, but it's half destroyed. <laughs> so we got. Uh, Collector's Item Classics, issue number 12. It is missing a lot of the cover and the entire back cover, uh, but you get some cool Doctor Doom nonetheless. We got Fantastic Four, 174. We got more of the thing, number 17. I always like this ad on the back of these, like that Star Wars arcade ad. The guy with the weird teeth. You gotta love it. <laughs> Uh, we got Fantastic Four 145, Marvel's Greatest Comics 54. What in the world is this? Uh, it looks like they opened up a magazine called Wacky Times, but they kept, however, oh, they opened it. Who opens poly bags from the side? Okay, anyway. Uh, they left a cool uh, Adventures of Kool Aid Man freebie in the bag. So there you go. Kool Aid Man. <laughs> We got some Metal Men once again, number 40. Definitely like the Metal Men stuff. Any of that DC era stuff, that's kind of like my favorite stuff to collect anymore. Beyond the Grave, number 17. Definitely have not seen that one, but catches my interest for sure. Pink Panther. Now, I do like collecting these when I can, and I'll have to see if I have these or not, or if they're upgrades, but... Just any of like the House of Mystery, House of Secrets stuff from this era. I love collecting this stuff. Here's uh, House of Mystery 210. So really like those. I'm going to put those on the... I need to take care of that very soon pile. And then 204. Shoot 204 there. And then uh, shout out to my pal, uh, the Mastodon. I know he's been talking about these books for years. Uh, these weird war tales. So I saw some of the weird war tales stuff and decided why not go ahead and you know pick it up for those as well. So there's issue 89, issue 39. It's quite the leap there. We got issue number 93. Got issue number 63. And then issue 110 with the creature commandos. We got issue 78. Issue number 80, cool Joe Kubert cover on that one for sure. We got issue 99, 92. Yep, more Joe Kubert goodness. Uh, issue 56. And then we go back to the Defenders, issue number 11. A little bit of missing cover there, but other than that, it looks like a nice copy. Uh, we got Daredevil, 155, so I always like collecting the older Daredevils when I get my hands on them as well. We got King Size, Annual Avengers number 11. 
Going back to Daredevil, I would take all the Daredevil all day. We got issue number 129 and the worst poly bag you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Iron Man number 135. We got Eternals number four. Doesn't love the Eternals. <laughs> uh, cool. What was that? Nah. Ernie Chan cover on Conan the Barbarian 163. I haven't seen that before. That looks pretty cool, actually. Marvel's Greatest Comics 61. And what is more random in this box at this time than a random issue of Death Blow from Image? Because we haven't had any Image yet. And you got everything you buy like this has to have quarter bin 90s Image every time. So Death Blow. Do love me some uh, 90s image, though. You got, look at Gen 13s on there making a guest appearance. Love this stuff back in the day. I do have to say hi to Joker Comics and Cards. What is going on, Joker? Nice to see you in the chat today. Hope you're feeling good, man. And Metarog says, got to go, but congrats on a mess of comic goodness. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good way to put it. Mess of comic goodness. Because <laughs> it's going to be a mess. Uh, we've got Fantastic Four 147. Thing versus Namor, it looks like. Giant size uh, creatures featuring Werewolf by Night. So, issue number one. Really cool looking. Uh, good condition on that, too, it looks like. That's great. 146 FF. I feel like I got a double or two here, but I've seen so many books in such a short little period of time. I'll let you guys rewind and figure it out. <laughs> we got 149. Uh, giant size Fantastic Four annual number two. Unfortunately, there is no giant size X Men. I did look for that specifically in the picture once I saw that giant size banner on a lot of things. Uh, Conan 250. Bill Ailing says he loves those werewolf comics. Yeah, there's some good ones from Marvel around that time, too. Uh, Jambo says, Hope you buy a lot of bags and boards, also. Yeah, I've, I've got quite the reserve of bags and boards. I'm just trying to figure out which ones. I'm going to mylar up probably the ones you see me sitting over here, and then these will probably be put into polys if they fit. I might have to use mylar for a bunch of them because that's I, I bought a bunch from E. Gerber years ago. Uh, more Woody Woodpecker. Woody Woodpecker. And I would say, like, I'm, I'm shocked based on some of the condition I've seen on some other books, how well the cartoon ones have been taken care of. I mean, they're obviously they're not the greatest. Spine ticks up and down, but I was usually when I get lots like this, the most jacked up books are these, and it's kind of the opposite right now. Um, here's a cool rando for sure Marvel Milestone Edition Fantastic Four number one. So I don't have too many of these, like you know, platinum uh Marvel Milestone Edition, so those are a lot of fun when you see them if you can collect them for cheap. Fantastic Four 135. Uh, the Witching Hour, number 71, with a nice, huge piece of scotch tape across the cover there. Uh, Bugs Bunny. Another, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a double FF 146 again. Uh, we've got the First Men in the Moon. So that's pretty cool. Some of these gold keys I may actually hang around on. We've got some Three Stooges. Who doesn't love them? Some Three Stooges gold key stuff. These, I I may have to keep the Three Stooges because they just look great. Um, sorry, Robbed Christensen. You don't have your Three Stooges anymore. Uh, the Little Stooges, because, you know, you have to have all the gimmicks back in the day. If you have regular edition characters, you had to have, like, babies and kids and stuff. Oof. They, these Three Stooges certainly range from good to great to destroyed. <laughs> We got more three stooges. Lots of stooges here. Stooges. <laughs> and stooges. Let's see what Joker's saying here. Uh, Joker says, I like the old Sylvester. I thought I saw a pussycat old Tweety would say, yeah, there's a lot of cool looking just gold key um, kids comics in here. We're going to the other side of the spectrum with some like zero freebies from the 90s. Yeah, these are, uh, I believe, freebies from Hero Illustrated, Grimax, uh, Deep Space Nine. Somehow you always end up with Star Trek comics in the collection, whether you want them or not. 
I'm sure but they might be good to somebody out there. Not that issue though. It's destroyed. Vortex. I think this is my like second or third copy. Another freebie from back in the day. Now this is cool. This one appears to still be in the bag as well. I think I actually had this as a kid. This is the Star Wars X-wing Rogue Squadron. And I believe to get this, you had it was like a serial mail-away, basically. That's why it's in this uh, poly bag. Yeah, it was around the time they the uh, original trilogy came out on video for like the last time before the special editions hit. So serial giveaway on Rogue Squadron. So I oh, thought that was cool because you know the games were great back in the day too. Werewolf by Night number 22. I do not own near enough Werewolf by Night in the collection. I've wanted to check this out, so I'm happy to at least, you know, have this collection to get a couple of these. Uh, we got the giant size Werewolf number two. Not destroyed, so that's great. Uh, Werewolf by Night number six has seen better days, but it's not terrible. Uh, Werewolf number 14. Cool plug cover there. And then when you're getting into this area, you got to have some of the creatures on the loose stuff. Here's Man Wolf, Guardians of the Galaxy 19 from probably the 90s, early, early 90s or late 80s. Uh, Marvel presents Guardians of the Galaxy number seven. And then, of course, we're bouncing all over the place. We're going X Force number 10 because <laughs> we got to go back to the quarter bins. Uh, Conan. Number 66, and it's falling apart. <laughs> and then a great conclusion to this box. Uh, we've got House of Mystery 209, so cool rights and cover there. Always like the House of Mysteries when I can get my hands on them for not super expensive. And that concludes box number three, so we got one more to go. <laughs> Last one. Let's see what... Fun for this one actually has packing material in it, so it looks like oh, this might be. They said they're gonna throw in bags and boards, so there's just this is so random. Okay, let's just take it from the top here. So we've got some the, here's their throw in <laughs> bags and boards, so at least they're the uh regular slash silver size, so that actually will come in handy. Um, and then I don't know what in the world this mess is i guess we can look through it um it looks like they just threw in some coverless stuff to for packing material i guess i definitely don't remember this in the picture at all so i'm almost afraid to take these out because they're probably going to get like paper everywhere so it looks like we got a coverless werewolf by night number five <laughs> so unknown soldier yeah it looks like they just i don't know if these are like free throw-ins or i hope i didn't pay money for these <laughs> uh marvel tales i see, kind of see these coverless more than you would think we got some uh super team family number one uh looks like wonder woman 211 that was a giant size one um fantastic four i think that's a double size 134 some uh nostalgic mads and there's the crummy, awesome bag they were in. <laughs> see what else we got. We got some, uh, looks like an EC reprint, Tales of the Crypt. Those are always fun. Enjoy that. No idea what this is. It's in a random, is there, this even opened? Some sort of like random poly bag. Should we open it? I guess that's a yes. <laughs> All right. Hasn't been opened and who knows how many. It's probably going to be like the rarest thing ever. I'm just destroying the value by opening it. Who knows? Let's see. See what we got here. We've got the Ozzy Smith of cereal giveaway. I'm sure that was a, uh, yeah, it had to be Frosted Flakes because it's got Tony the Tiger on there. So I guess that's out of the bag now, thus being the nicest condition comic in the lot. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't, this is so weird and random. I love it. Let's see what we got in this random manila envelope here. Looks like we got some Kool-Aid Man giveaways. So they have two copies of this issue six Kool-Aid Man. And then a Kool-Aid Man number four. So there's that. He's not smiling. He, you know he means serious business here. What is going on on this cover? 
So it looks this is probably where they get you know Kingdom Hearts got their idea, I guess. Like some sort of like fire guy is attacking some girl with a key, and Kool-Aid Man literally busted through the sky to attack this fire guy. Gotta love it. Absolutely amazing. Let's see what uh, Joker's saying here. <laughs> I bought a book on Kickstarter by Mike Pluto, and it has all his work on Man Thing, Werewolf by Night, Frankenstein. It was awesome. It's autographed and has original sketch, which is hard to get. That's really cool, man. That, that's the, some of the best stuff you can get right there. Uh, back to some normal books here. We got Superman 276. Uh, I believe this is kind of almost a tryout for bringing Shazam into, or Captain Marvel into DC Comics. I think this is Captain Thunder here. Really cool Nick Cardi cover. Uh, we've got Action Comics 448. Got World's Finest 283. Uh, DC Comics Presents 55. I haven't seen any Flash yet. We got issue 319 on the Flash. We got Action Comics 590. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got Superman number nine, John Byrne run post crisis. Same thing, Superman 7. Oh, look at this. I forgot this was in here. The Teen Titans 19 uh, from the late Silver Age. We got some Cardi there. I'll put that one on the side for sure. Uh, Flash 316. We've got the Phantom. Really cool 12 cent Phantoms here. Like those early gold key covers. Um, there's that. We got another, I'm assuming this is another Ozzy Smith giveaway of some sort. Um, and then I believe the last thing we got is the boards. We're done. Yay. So there is the entire gigantic haul here. So I guess I'll go over the couple highlights I separated out up here because we had a pretty good amount of highlights. It's great. So not that everything else wasn't a highlight, but. We got the great legend show. What's going on, man? Uh, how you doing? We're going to go over some highlights and then we'll sign off uh, because it's been, wow, well, at least I got through all of them in less than an hour. That was my fear. So we got uh, the Teen Titans 19. I had some cool House of Mystery stuff, 209, 204, and then 210. We got that early Dan Jurgens Superman I've been looking for for a while. Happy with that. Uh, we got the early Jason Todd Killer Croc appearance on Batman 357. We got the first appearance of Rogue and King Size Avengers number 10. And unfortunately, uh, we did not collect the entirety of Craven's Last Stop, but we got off to the issues I think I keep finding. I think I at least have one through four, if I remember right. Or maybe I just need to go do my math again. So I got 293, um, Web 31. And then uh, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man 131. And they're all in pretty good condition, so that's good. Uh, cool Hobgoblin cover. We got Herbie. I always forget the little guy's name, <laughs> but I know it's the first appearance. Uh, we got some early Dan Slot on Spider-Man via Ren and Stimpy and Powdered Toast Man. And then the, the last one, the, the main book that caught my eye besides First Rogue, First Jason Todd. As uh, Amazing Spider-Man 252. So, and it's a newsstand. You got to end on a newsstand. So, very happy with the haul. I got a crap load of stuff to clean up and organize now, but that's what I do. Oh, yeah, and we had turtle stuff. So, we can recap the Loot Crate one more time. We got a cool exclusive Loot Crate figure with Claw Shredder there. Got a brand new fanny pack with an Ultom or, you know, Krang, basically. Um, and then they will pin, wrap, well, you assume it's wrapped, but it's just a Mirage Turtle. And then uh, the cool looking one is this Raphael t-shirt, which is probably like his most famous splash panel from the original run, in my opinion. So definitely have to be wearing this walking down the street for sure. <laughs> All right. Big thank you guys to joining me throughout this whole live stream. I definitely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Seawater19 which is right there. You can also follow me using that on Instagram, Twitter, uh, pretty much all of the, the gaming stuff like Switch, uh, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. I have been playing the new Ninja Turtles game, Shredder's Revenge. 
Uh, so friend me up. We'll play on there. I definitely want to get like four to six players going. That would be awesome. Until next time, Kyle Bunga, dudes. <laughs>